Welcome out to the Epically Geek Show, episode number 18. I am your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Our opening question uh, tonight is uh, very specific because we've only got one more week before, possibly, at least as Kevin Smith puts it, the greatest superhero movie in the world drops on us. So tonight's opening question is, before you go see the movie, are you currently Team Cap or Team Stark? Cyrus Martin. I'm 100% Team Stark, and I've been Team Team Stark. And I'm going to stay Team Stark. Okay. Boom. Drop the mic. Any particular reason? Uh, Captain nope. America he just kind of rubs me the wrong way. He just seems like, you know, his Bucky friend was a you know, bad guy and caused a lot of things, and now he's trying to support him, even though like he's a criminal and we're acting like he's not now or whatever, and you know, Stark has gone through all kinds of shit and spent all of his own money on shit, and he never gets the respect. Everybody thinks he's the man, and he's, you know, like he's the, you know, part of the one percent or whatever. But he's actually like out there, you know, giving everything he has of himself. I, I'm Team Stark. All right, fair enough. Jay, uh, Team Stark or Team Cap? Team Cap. All right. Any particular reason? I like the shield. No. <laughs> no, well, he's okay. just... I don't know. He's just... Uh, I don't know. Lewis, uh, Team Cap or it. Team Stark? I'm actually Team Cap. Okay. Because he is the leader, and he's going to show you why he's the leader. And that makes Iron Man or Stark part uh, on the side of the government. But... The government was against him all this time anyway, so he's going to make everybody see the light, so Team Cap. I am also currently Team Cap, um, although from what I'm reading and what I've heard about early reviews is, is most people who go in there say both sides make a very convincing argument as to their sides. Like It's not just very blind one side or the other. Um, the main reason why I'm Team Cap is, do any of y'all watch uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? No. no, I haven't okay. in a while. I, I do watch Agents of Shield, and it just every week it it constantly reminds you that um, the government and Shield and pretty much all organized uh, uh, groups were infiltrated by uh, uh, Hydra, and I'm like, yeah, let's not uh, organize all the superheroes and give them, uh, you know. A uh, oversight by a government body, which is probably still, you know, controlled by Hydra. So yeah, I'm. That's honestly the main reason. I understand both sides, but like I said, um, I'm looking forward to the movie. So who knows? I may walk out and be like, nope, yep, uh, Tony. Tony's got the right idea. So, but we'll see. Anyway, we're. I, I think we're all pretty excited about it. So, um, no, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does any, are you excited for anything, Jay? <laughs> no, yeah, that's a loaded question. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't remember the last time I was like truly excited for something. Okay. Damn, dude. Yeah, it's it's bad. Man, <laughs> and that, that should be the promo for the show, right there. Just cut the show. Right there. <laughs> I can't. I can't remember anything I've been excited for. Join us next week on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this week's episode, um, I was going through, uh, yes, I, I'm i a geek, I'm, you know, it's when we have the site and the show and everything, and I was looking at uh, the things that we kind of talk about on the site and our interest or whatever, and I realized that we've done a couple episodes and we've talked about video games and cartoons and movies and stuff, and we haven't talked about board games. We've, we've mentioned them in passing here and there, but we haven't really talked about it. So um, I want to spend an episode and kind of talk about the world of board gaming, uh, both our memories... Uh, some of the games that we play, uh, just you know, just different, just different things about uh, playing board games. So, uh, we'll start off with some of our memories of playing board games. Um, Lou, do you want to lead off? Um, like, what uh, do you did you play board games with your family? Um, was it mainly with your friends? Like, what are your memories about playing with bo- playing board games? Oh yes, with uh, family and friends. The original family favorite was Uno, but that was promptly pushed to the side when my sister discovered another game called Sequence. And at its peak on the family get-togethers, we'd have 
five, six tables of this game going on all at the same time. Weren't you also it, playing for money? Yes, we also played for money. In house rules like crazy. Yeah, and like... Then, uh, uh, our, my other memory is, of course, playing with you and your brother. Yeah. And that was the other big thing. I won't say any more because uh, I'm not going to use the games we played. But Okay. <laughs> uh, the... Um, uh, yeah, I, I remember uh, uh, playing sequence. Like, I remember you and I had some kind of uncanny bond, and like we could fucking like ruin people playing that game. And I always wanted to get together with you at one of your family uh, get-togethers because I was like, dude, we could run a table, man. <laughs> Wait, I, I won thirty bucks by myself. Imagine if we tag team. It was. Oh be... damn! Oh man! I don't know if we still have that chemistry, but yeah, we used to we used to piss some people off. They're like, "How are y'all doing this?" Like. We just we just know when we were going to. If you've never played Sequence, basically it's a, it's a mat and it's got all the different cards like from a, a normal card deck. And what you're doing is is if you're you're trying to get uh, rows of what three uh, four or five in rows a row? of three rows of five three rows of five. That's right. And um, when you play as pairs, you can't of course say anything, but you're trying to get the other player to put down cards, uh, you know, so that you can build these these lines of five together. And Lewis and I just always had this chemistry where we're like he, you know, if I couldn't specifically build a line, I would throw down everything I could in that area so that he could build off of it or vice versa. And, you know, I've played with other people and I'm like, let's see, I've put all of my cards in this quadrant of the board are you not picking up what I'm putting down? Obviously not. <laughs> so I'm trying to throw you a and hint then, here. And then the other fun thing about this game is you're not supposed to communicate at all with your partner. It's a quiet game, silent game. But there's always way, ways of the art of speaking without speaking. Yes. And that's uh, the other little side game that goes on. Yes. That was always lots of fun. Yeah, I love Sequence. That's a good game. Um. We have to try that out at the guys' weekend. So, uh, Jay, do you have any memories about playing uh, board games from when you were a kid? No, no, not really. But uh, the only thing I could think of that we used to play was uh, Life. Okay. Uh, about you know twice a month, uh, my aunt and uncle would come over and you know kind of. Just sit down with you know me and my parents and my sister and play, and that's only the really thing that's popping in my head right at this moment. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Sai, do you have any memories about playing board games when you were a kid? Well, me, my cousin, and my brother used to play Monopoly all the time, and we would play it in the the long version of Monopoly where it takes like all day. You know, yes. And I can remember many a time, like wanting to stop and not being able to, and having to endure like hours of getting screwed, in, you know, <laughs> by my cousin. <laughs> <Dude. on> <laughs> you know, I just was. I can remember having many, many a game that did not go well, and I had. To, to just sit there and just, uh, you know, eat shit for like four hours. <laughs> right, yeah. Cause that's because everybody played house rules, and house rules always extended the game. And then yeah. wasn't it, Gene, one time we sat down and played by the by the letter of the rules, and it was like over quick. <laughs> See, I don't remember. I don't ever remember playing by the actual rules. Um, yeah. Maybe we did one time. It, it was much, much, much... We were much older than when we started yeah. originally. Okay. But yeah, so well, since you mentioned Monopoly, we'll go ahead and just talk about it. The um, I've done some research on it. The interesting thing about Monopoly is, and a lot of research has been done on it, Monopoly has killed a lot of people's love for board games, and it's specifically for what you're talking about, Cy. Everyone... Uh, everyone played house rules. Like it, me, like our house in particular. Whenever you um, uh, uh, got some kind of a fee, like if you had to pay a fee or whatever, we put it in in a pot in the middle of the, of the board. Yeah. And if you landed on free parking, you got the pot. Mm -hmm. What that ends up doing is, uh, you know, looking at, you know, as a strategic thing, it, the point of the game is actually, and I guess this is why a lot of people 
don't like playing by the actual rules. The actual point of the game is so that you can get out the other players as quickly as possible. You're supposed to be trying to um, cause the other people to go bankrupt as quickly as possible. But most people don't want to play it that way because they look at it as, oh, well, we're not going to set up this entire board game and then, like, 20 minutes later, like, you're out because if you're out, then, you know, then you don't have anything to do and, you know, you're just going to sit around watching the rest of us. But if you play it the way you're supposed to, within the allotted time, I think it says 45 minutes to an hour, roughly, to play, everyone should be gone and you should be done with the game, which an hour of playing a board game isn't that bad. It's those six-hour... You know, drawn out. You're just like you're right. It's just like, come on, let this fucking game end. And then, and then the other house rule is whoever's the leader at that at the point in game, they always end up for some reason making the person that's in last place. He's not totally out yet, but he's pretty soon, and they just kind of float them like they become yes. the, the gimp, the little manservant. Here, here, manage my money for me, stuff like that. <laughs> here, I'm gonna yeah. throw you these other properties that I don't need, but. <laughs> it keeps the other guy afloat. Yeah, I remember doing that. Oh well, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm I hit that again. No, nah, don't worry. I'm not worried about getting your four dollar rent. Just fucking stay there. I don't care. And yeah. 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 So yeah, I, yeah. Monopoly is like I said. Monopoly has has killed a lot of people's love for board games. In fact, um, we'll we'll talk about that in just a minute when we when I kind of get back to that. But uh, yeah. So some of my memories. Um, I, not specifically Monopoly, but like when I grew up, uh, Lewis actually lived like right around the corner from where I, I grew up, and uh, I lived on a on the corner lot of a cul-de-sac, and in the back part of the cul-de-sac was where my grandparents lived, uh, specifically my 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 dad's parents, and um, my grandfather was he was my hero growing up, and he loved games, like games of all types, and he. Um, they they would have like the traditional like you know friends come over and they would play cards or they would play dominoes or they would play board games or whatever and they had a they had a specific room set up as a game room to play these types of games and uh, so I remember playing game you know at least watching them play games even you know at an early age um, and then I got as I got older um, I was in third or fourth grade I think. I think I was third or fourth grade, and my grandfather got really sick, and he uh, he got cancer, and um, he was you know old school, so you know he didn't ever go to the doctor unless he absolutely had to, and of course by the time he went to the doctor, it was already too late. It had pretty much eaten up his entire body. Um, so in the six months that he pretty much was alive after that point, um, you know a lot of family came over and uh, and. Uh, we spent time playing board games, and we played, you know, lots of different things. We played Monopoly. We played lots, of, you know, just uh, uh, we'll get to some of those other games that we played or whatever. But um, so I remember playing those games, and and that's a fond memory because that was the last things I really got to do with my grandfather before he passed away. And then after that, I played board games here and there with uh, my friends growing up in high school and stuff. It was mainly. If we were just absolutely bored to tears of, um, uh, of you know playing whatever games that we had on the Nintendo or Super Nintendo or Genesis or whatever, we would uh, we'd break out a board game and play it or whatever. Uh, Sai, what the hell are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> are you building something? Yeah, he's, dig he's digging out his Monopoly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we would uh, we we played board games here and there. Um, I'll spe I specifically remember that we were playing Monopoly, and it was um, Street Fighter Two. We were all sitting around, sitting around the uh, kitchen table, and we were playing Street Fighter Two. Uh, we were playing Monopoly. I'm sorry. And um, a friend of ours' brother calls the house, and I go over and answer the phone. He's like, "Sean's got Monopoly." Or Sean picked up Street Fighter Two. We're like, "What?" And I like hung up on him, and I was like, "Guys, Street Fighter Two's out." And they're like, "What?" So Lewis and Danny and Aaron, two of our other friends, jump on their bikes and go to get a copy of the game. So my brother and I are are there, yeah, across town. So my brother and I are cleaning up the Monopoly game. And then my friend Sean shows up and brings out and has Street Fighter 2, so we start playing it. So, you know, we pretty much just, we dropped it at that time. Um, I, yeah, I don't really remember playing board games too much. Like in high, I'm sorry, in college, um... I played sequence with with Lou. Um, 
I also remember playing Phase 10 with uh, Cyrus uh, while we were at CTC. When we'd have downtime between uh, classes, we would play uh, a game called uh, uh, Phase 10 quite a bit, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I don't even remember all the rules for that. I should actually get a copy of that game again. Uh, you remember that, Cy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I, I, but anyway... I, you actually have to ask me something right when my phone messed up and I didn't hear what you were saying. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I was asking, did, uh, do you remember playing Phase 10 in college? <laughs> Yeah, I loved it. That was awesome. They had we had good time playing. That's not a board game though, is it? I mean, it's yeah, the card game tabletop board kind of game, same thing. Yeah. Uh-uh. Um, <laughs> oh, fuck you. Uh, so we uh, we we played that, and then like I said, we played a sequence or whatever. And then honestly, I can't even tell you the last time I played a board game. And I didn't get back into it until I was um, I was married. I was working at the high school. It was the near the end of the year, and uh, one of the teachers comes in and was like, you know, so what are y'all doing the last day? Because uh, we at that time we got off the same time that the teachers did. And we're like, we're just going to be chilling in our office, like, taking in equipment for that last day or whatever. He's like, well, I've got this board game, and uh, what if I bring it up here and we can play it? And my partner and I, you know, are both looking at each other like, board game? Like, like Monopoly? He's like, no, 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 no. It's 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 called Settlers of Catan. I think you'll really like it. Y'all, y'all tend to like strategy stuff. I think y'all like it. We're like, okay, we'll give it a shot. And this other teacher heard about it, and he's like, well, why don't we bring pizza, and we can, you know, get some drinks or whatever, and it'll be fun. So... Um, yeah, I was introduced to Settlers of Catan, and ever since then, it just kind of reignited that spark, and I've really been into board games since. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my, my history of playing with uh, playing board games. So, um, let's talk about let's talk about some of the, the the board games that we do play or have played. Um, anything in particular stand out? We've already talked about Monopoly, uh, loser. Any any game you remember? Either now or or then that you played that you used to like. Well, I remember we played Mousetrap. Oh yes. Most of the games that I remember us playing was, was the you know the the always the introductory life, uh, Mousetrap. Um, oh yeah, like uh, Hungry Hippos. That one was. Oh, played the heck out of Hungry Hippos. And yeah, what, what was that one with the checkers? But you put them in the little, uh, you drop them Connect down. Four. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. I, I see giant versions of those different places, and I'm just like, yeah, that that's fun. Um, yeah, Mousetrap was interesting. I never cared for Mouse. I didn't care for any of the games where there was like a, uh, a like you had to build something, and there was a physical aspect to it because it never seemed to work out. Like you'd put this really funky mouse trap together, and then you know it would get about halfway through, and it would just stop, and you're just like, really. <laughs> Yeah, like when um, when when the pieces would work, it was fantastic, but they would always get stuck. You know, this is before you know high quality plastic molding, I guess. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And then the other game I remember us playing a lot was Clue. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, loved Clue. Still love Clue. I, you know, I actually should get a copy of Clue. The funny thing is, is I had a classic version, like original classic version of Clue, and every time I've like tried to go get another one, I just I don't know something about the artwork on it. I'm just like, this is not it. This is not the right game. Um, but yeah, loved Clue. Clue was a lot of fun. Um, actually, since we're talking about Clue, I'll go ahead and bring up two things. Um, one of the games that we played whenever uh, my grandfather was sick. Now, th- th- definitely granted. We all know what time periods we grew up in, but let me just date this. Um, so we played the video version of Clue, um, and it was an aspect of the game, and I don't even remember how it worked, but literally there was a VHS tape that you put in, and as you're playing the game, you would watch this little scene that would happen, and you had to like fast forward to different parts of the tape and, and you know rewind or whatever. But you're playing this game, and you had to watch, and then like you had to ask questions, and... Uh, about specific things that were in the video or whatever, and it's just like, what an odd mechanic for 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 a board game. But you know, it, we we had fun doing it. So, um, the uh, and then of course the, the you know there was the movie that was based on the board game, which I love to this day. Uh, Clue is, is just an absolutely hilarious movie. I thought the board game was based on the movie. No. <laughs> <laughs> now that reminds me of a. There was a football game that I had 
and uh, it came with a, with a board, and I forget the pieces, but there was a, a, a VHS tape included. And so uh, I'm trying to remember if, if you roll a die or, or play a card, and you you uh, move the pieces according to what the card said. But sometimes the card says revert, refer to the video. So then you play the video, and whatever play happened on on the television, it's uh, clips from real NFL games at the time back in the 80s. And uh, whatever play happened, that's what happened in the in your board game. But I ended up just watching the, <laughs> the football highlights. <laughs> but it was long. Like I remember just playing it, and I'm you know fall asleep, wake up, still going. <laughs> it's like a, an hour and a half, two hours, or however long those VHS tapes were back in the day of nothing. But uh, uh, it was basically the the highlights of the NFL films. <laughs> Oh God! And then I, I think we remember. Re- that. And then I accidentally recorded over it one time. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> because remember, you you would just put a piece of tape over the tabs on the back of the VHS tape, and then you could record uh, over it. And then it got yep. mixed in, and and or, or I left it in there, and my mom record. I don't remember what happened, but <laughs> it was oh, that's balls. I wish I could find a copy of that video monopoly or video risk. Oh, video risk. Video uh, clue just just to kind of go back and, and look. Number one, I'm sure it's I'm sure it looks horrible, but you know what? I wonder those clips may even be on YouTube. But just as the nostalgia factor of going back and kind of reliving that part of, of my childhood might be interesting. So, um, now let me ask you this, Lou. Do you remember the clue birthday party that we had? Uh, no, I don't remember. Okay, so my mom got this great idea that um, uh, we would have a birthday party at this oh, yes, big I house. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, and um, she set it up. We, like I said, this was a, a very large house at the time, and we all get everyone gathered together, and we were all assigned roles from the game. And throughout the house, she had hidden like uh, a weapon, a location, and a person in the room. And we could go in pairs, and we had to basically we had a time limit. We had to tear apart that room to see if we could find the clues to help mm-hmm. eliminate them from the list as to who the actual killer, the location, and the weapon were. And uh, I remember we had so much fun playing that. Um, we actually like did another uh, another version of it. Like they mixed everything up, and we got to play it again a second time. So, um, in fact, some of the some of the the friends that were there. Years afterwards, still told me that was like one of the best birthday parties they'd ever been to because it was so much fun. Um, Plus, it helped yeah. your, your house like had all these hidden doors and, and shit like okay, that. Okay, there was a one hidden door to the <laughs> to the cellar. Um, but yeah, so you know what? Actually, I need to ask my mom if she remembers that. I, I bet she does. So um, that was really, really, really smart on her part. Um, my grandfather. One of the other things that I got from my grandfather is. Um, Risk. Risk is also another game where you're specifically trying to, uh, uh, you know, eliminate the other players. My grandfather, uh, in his infinite wisdom, decided that he bought two copies of Risk so that it would allow you to build up your armies even larger than they normally were. So that's how I always grew up playing Risk. So, like, these little skirmishes, like you see people having between one and two armies, no, 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 no. Like, the fu- you couldn't fucking see the country because there were so many armies piled onto the country. <laughs> um, so we had, you know, those would, it was all, you know, that was a very, uh, that was another game that, you know, was extended a lot longer than it should have been. But because of the fact that, uh, sorry, uh, because of the fact that uh, you're actually battling with each other, it, it, it actually always seemed to make it go a little bit faster. Um that is when I also learned from my mother um, um, how to be ruthless playing a board game. Um, my mom is very uh, strategy-minded, and uh, I'll never forget this one game. I had basically wiped her out, and um, I took pity on her. I said, you know, I was like, well, you're pretty much dead anyway. You can't really do anything. I'm just going to kind of leave you alone, and then I moved on. Well... I had weakened my borders, and she had slowly but surely built up, and I was too busy doing other stuff, and she just ran through my armies and kept me down to one two, one or two little places and proceeded to let me slowly but surely build up resources until she needed the resources that I have and then sw- 
you know, promptly swept me off the face of the planet. And I'll, that's a lesson I have never forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> so to this day, when I play board games uh, with her, I'm always like, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking it easy on you, woman. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was lots of fun. I love playing Risk. That's one Any other game I didn't you can play that much of. Do what? That's one game I didn't play much of. It was Risk. I never played Stratego. I know that's a game that a lot of people, like, is a classic game a lot of people play. I've never played it, though. I don't even have I've heard of it, but never never played it either. Yeah. Um, another game that we used to play whenever my grandfather was uh, was sick was, um, it's called Balderdash. Have any of y'all ever played it? Not a big fan. Uh, basically, you go around in turn, and uh, you, you pick up a card, and the card has a um, a word on it, a a, 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 a obscure word, and um, you're, everyone writes down what they think the definition of the word is, and then they're shuffled up, and you are placing bets on who you think is you know who has the right one, who gave what answer, whatever. And uh, it can be a lots of fun until you like. Well, at at the time, whenever I'm a I'm a kid, I'm fairly easy to read. And my grandfather basically used me as a mark constantly. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, I always knew which one you were going to vote. What 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 you would vote for? So I always knew how to like tailor my answer so that you would vote for that one." And so, uh, but you know, you're a kid. <sighs> Pardon me. Um, it's just like you know. Uh, 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 yeah. It was just a lot of fun, you know. Granted, you know, yeah, I got to play with adults, so it was, uh, you know, you always think you're you're bigger britches than you are when you get to play with the adults. So uh, my boys feel that way right now. Uh, uh, I think shoots and ladders. I think they're playing shoots and ladders at school, so I need to get a copy of that. But uh, we've got a couple of memory games, and uh, uh, I introduced them to the idea of of the. Uh, the uh, trophy. So whenever we do play a board game, uh, I usually let them win, um, like uh, a memory game. I usually let them win, and they immediately want to get the trophy and, and everything. So um, and of course I got that from that show tabletop. So that was that's been lots of fun with them. The uh, do you remember the 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 Ghostbusters board game that we had, Lou? Uh, I no, I don't remember that one at all, actually. There were four, like the board was divided up into four sections, and there was like the staircase that you had to like traverse your way up to the top of the tower, and it had one of those aspects, like occasionally like this ball would shoot down, and if you were on the staircase, it knocked you off, and then you had to start back oh, at a certain level. I it was one of those yeah. kind of like mousetrap in that, you know, there was a physical aspect, and of course... After a while, the cardboard didn't want to fit in 100%, you know, because it's kind of gotten uh, messed up or whatever. And, it, yeah, it just didn't work out so great. It's funny, though, seeing some of those board games, like, online, people will post, you know, memories and stuff of it, and, you know, if they still have copies of it. And some of those board games go for a lot of money. Um, one in particular, uh, I only remember playing it once or twice. Do you? Uh, we got it a little bit later on. I guess we were in... Middle school, maybe high school. Do you remember that ge- that board game, Hero Quest? Oh, the name sounds familiar. I, I can't play it. It was um, it was basically like an RPG in a box. Um, one person was the the dungeon master, and then everyone else played the characters, and then like you know there were setups, and the board was divided up, and you could do different things. Uh, uh, like I said, it was basically an RPG in a box, and. Um, yeah, apparently they didn't make too many of those, and it was extremely, it, it was rare in the first place. But, um, yeah, if you can get a hold of it, like, especially an entire copy of the game, man, it is going for, like, insane money out there. For a freaking board game. I'm trying to look it up here real quick. I meant to do that before the show. Um, let's just see what it's listed on Amazon for. I thought of another game that we used to play. What's that? It was called Cathedral. Cathedral. Uh, I don't know that one. Uh, it wasn't really complicated. Basically, like, it was a, a board that looked like the inside of, like, a castle. And it had, like, a wall that went around the whole board. It was a plastic board. And the it, on the inside, it had all these little raised squares. And you had all these pieces of wall 
that they were all different shapes, and then there was a white cathedral. And at the beginning of the game, you would set the cathedral on the board, and then everybody who was playing would divide, you divide up the pieces evenly with each other, and you would try to. Uh, man, I'm having a hard time remembering. It's a long time ago. I don't know if you tried to take the cathedral or take as much of the board as you could. I think it was kind of like uh, that game Quicks, you know, where you try to get as much space as you can, something like that. I mean, Manon used to play it all the time. Yeah, apparently, the the price on this game has gone down. Like, you can actually get a, a used copy for about sixty bucks, which I mean, that's the cost of a video game. I mean, so like, there were even expansions for this game. That's what that's what's crazy. Like, I didn't realize there were any expansions for this board game back then. And we're talking about the nineties. Like that that's that is not an idea for board games that I was introduced to until like just recently. The fact that there would be you know an expansion for a board game or whatever. So. But yeah, like this, I'm I'm seeing a lot right now on uh, eBay. A lot of four Hero Quest RPG board game, Barbarian Count, um, 650 bucks. <laughs> like it would be fun to go back and play that game, but not that much fun. Uh, <laughs> my wife would kill me. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so let's uh, uh some of the um, as we're playing board games now, um. When all do you get a chance to play, Lou? Not as often as I'd want to. We've got some friends well, nearby that now that uh, football season's pretty much over and they all work in higher education, so a lot of their uh, end-of-the-year festivities and beginning you know, recruiting of new students is all that's getting ready to wind up. So usually we start picking it up again over the summer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not, not as much as I want to. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's always the case. About the only time I really get to play is um, uh, any. Uh, okay, so yeah, going back, start playing Catan, and uh, um, I, we had a conversation. We're actually going to probably talk about this more in an episode. But um, you've heard us refer to the the guys weekend, um, which by the way is coming up here pretty quick. Actually, guys, it's like forty days from now. Um, and forty nights. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, we have got a lot of rain. Um, but yeah, so we 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 started playing board games that way, and uh, I I bought a few more board games, and I kept telling my family about it, and I finally got them. I got them started on Catan, and like I got my dad. My dad's really freaking hooked. I got my dad hooked on it, and my mom, and my brother, and then I've started introducing them to some other <laughs> games, and now any time that. Um, uh, my dad comes up to visit, and like we're off work the next day, um, because the only time we really get to play is when the kids go down. So usually we don't get started playing games until eight thirty or nine o'clock at night, and we'll play till midnight or one or whatever. But um, uh, whenever he comes up or, or you know he's visiting or whatever, we try to get together and play board games, uh, which has been a, a a ton of fun. Like uh, they always look forward to it. Um, like I said, I'm constantly looking for adding different games or whatever, and I've been switching them out, and we, we'll get hooked on one for a while, move over to something else. Um, Lainey has actually gotten really into board games, um, so she enjoys playing them. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm slowly but surely uh, infecting more and more people with, with the bug. I mean, the other thing is, is if the last time you played board games really was was like Monopoly or whatever, they've changed so much. There's There's so much more depth, there's so much more things to do with them, um, uh, the European style board games, in particular, de definitely have a lot more depth. The the what I would try, what I would think is the traditional American style board games are more like what you were saying, Lou. The the starter games, as it were, uh, Life, Monopoly, stuff like that. Uh, whereas the European games tend to have a little more depth and and uh, uh, a little more flow to them. Uh, a lot of them actually, and one of the nice things about a lot of these games is. Uh, you're not specifically going head to head against each other, so everyone can still actively play the game all the way until the end of the game, and you don't have those situations like with Monopoly, where you know it gets down to just two people and everyone else is just kind of sitting around being like, "All right, well, let's go ahead and fucking end this so we can go do something we else." Must have a winner, and yes. you must have losers. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
one of the other things that's helped with this is uh, there's a show hosted by Will Wheaton called Tabletop. Will uh, it's on YouTube. Will yes, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Um, he gets on with uh, um, other about the same caliber uh, celebrities, people from TV shows, movies, and stuff like that, um, and, and plays these board games and actually demonstrates not only how they're played but you know goes through them and plays a game. So I, I've I love the show. Number one, it's it's funny as shit. Um, but actually seeing some of these board games played and you know the rules explained is just like, wow, that seems like that'd be a lot of fun. In fact, probably I think for the most part, all of the board games that I own now have been played on that show. And almost every single episode that comes on, I usually end the episode by pulling up my Amazon account, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> looking for the game, and adding it to a wish list. So I'm just like, well, it's there. Eventually, I'll get it. It's just a question of when. So, but yeah, I've got this. I've got a huge li- a wish list on uh, on Amazon of all these different board games I'd love to have. Um, like I said, start playing with with uh, family and friends and stuff. And uh, just as a sentimental note. Um, uh, uh, when we started playing these games, um, I specifically remember my my grandparents back way back in their playing in their their um, uh, in their game room. They had these wooden like wo- woven wooden bowls, and that's what they used for snacks. They're they could be they're a bowl you could use for pretty much anything. They're not like super expensive or anything like that, and. Um, uh, they just always had them, and that's what they always used for their snacks, whether it be you know chips or or, or nuts or, or whatever. And I, I got to thinking about it, and I was like, man, I, I wonder if my grandmother still has those. And sure enough, she does, and she's given them to me. So like I, you know, bring out these bowls that I mean, granted they're just bowls, but you know, it, it's kind of a nice memory to have of the days when I guess used to be able to play board games with my grandfather, and you know, so that, that's been a nice memory. Not only playing the board games, but also having you know some of those things that were actually his playing the game. So uh, yeah, that, I guess that's another reason why I, I really like board games is because you know it, it reminds me of a you know I've always had good memories with it. So um, so let's talk about some of the games that we play now. Um, I, I guess the granddaddy that kind of got most of us, at least me and Lou in particular, but I mean you know Cy and Jay do play some as well. Usually when it's just when they're here with us, uh, is Sellers of Catan. Um, you know, we haven't really played the online version in forever. I was just thinking about that. About the... Yeah, we need to do that again, because that was fun. So, um, if you've never played Catan, it's uh, it's been around for ooh, like two decades now. It's been around for quite a while now. Um, it is a good game to get people uh, infected with with uh, the, the board game virus, as it were. Um because uh, it, it's it's simple to play, it's not a head-to-head game per se, but um, and like I said, because it's a European style game, it um, uh, everyone gets to play the entire time. You're basically um, collecting resources to build roads in cities, and um, and you're you're scoring points by doing this. It sounds pretty boring until you get into the game and you start realizing there's number one a lot of there's a lot of chance to the game. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with the game itself, um, but there's also a lot of strategy. Um, I really wish my brother was on this episode because my brother and uh, is very good about seeing where I'm going with stuff. And let me tell you, this asshole has specifically torpedoed me multiple <laughs> times in the very setup of a game. And I'm just he—he's just like I know exactly what you're doing. I'm gonna put my little my, I'm gonna put my town here, and I'm like you little fucker. Um. Yeah. So uh, we have lots of fun playing that game. Um, now, the other thing you, is, it's got think, because it, uh, let me cut you off right there. Because board games in general are kind of like in a renaissance period right now. Do, do you think Catan is what kicked that off? I would. I, now, granted, that's what kicked it off for me. I would say yes. Talking with other people, um, because the guy who got me started on it said, "Yeah, he plays other board games as well." He goes, "But yeah, Catan is what was like." Got me hooked again. Because even so, because when y'all got hooked, I got hooked, and he, uh, I ended up getting it as well. And then a buddy of mine over here, he's like, "Oh yeah, I remember that game a long time ago." It's <laughs> it's that's how it always starts. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, um, yeah. I would I would say that's kind of what really started it off, but um, I honestly don't know. Because I mean, I've only been playing Catan for. 
Oh, geez. How long have I been? Uh, a couple years at least. Four. I've been playing it for about five or six years now. Um, but, I mean, I know it's been around for well over a decade, maybe even two. I know it's been out for a long time. And, um, uh, you know, I just was late to the game, as it were. And uh, But, yeah, that's what started off for me. So, yeah, in my mind, it's kind of always been that way. But other people I talk to who are into board games, Catan is like, everyone plays Catan. Like, it's not, it, you know, it's not like, well, do you play this? No, I haven't played that one yet. I've heard about it. Everyone's fucking played Catan. So I would say, yeah, that's that's probably a pretty safe bet, Lou. Um, and there's lots of expansions to it. I actually have one of the expansions. I haven't even opened up yet. I haven't had a chance to play it because I've been playing all these other board games. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, it, yeah, it's tons of fun. Um, I, I suggest it. If you've never played Catan, find someone to teach you to play Catan, and it is, oh, it's a lot of fun. Um, the next game I tend to use to infect people is Ticket to Ride. Um... I definitely suggest you get one of the expansion packs with the game, specifically because the cards that come with the game are definitely small. The expansion uh, pack cards are uh, full-size playing cards. It makes it so much easier to shuffle. Um, but on this game, once again, non-combative. You're not going head-to-head, -head per se. There are definite ways that you can screw other people up in the game. Once again, my brother is very good about this. Um, but... Um, and I've even thought about, uh, I can't tell you. Uh, the point of the game is you're, you're trying to complete routes uh, using these little, you're collecting resources and you're trying to uh, build these train routes across the U.S. And um, in doing so, you're trying to get these, you're trying to uh, uh, complete these tickets um, to connect different cities. If you don't complete the ticket, you it ends up counting against you at the end of the game. And um, he has specifically told me He's like, I could tell where you were going, and I thought about blocking you off there, so I just went in and did it. He's also told me he got to a point in the game, and he's just like, there's no way I'm going to fucking win this game. And he just randomly, he said he randomly picked someone. I think he purposely picked me. He's just like, I'm going to do, do everything I can to hose you in this game. And I was like, you little fucker. <laughs> oh. So you can play these games different ways. Uh, you can either, you know, you can play to win, or you can play to just screw with everyone, which, you, let's be honest, sometimes that's more fun. So, is there a game you want to throw out there real quick, Lou, before I... Yeah, the, the game that I saw on Tabletop was a dice rolling game. I, I just catered to dice rolling games for some reason, and I picked really? it up, and it was a uh, uh, roll for it. Now, yes. I, I, I don't remember... Did I have it at the last guy's weekend or not yet? No, not yet. I don't think I did. So it, it was a hit over this past holidays and to the point where the dice, which are actually a lot smaller. In yes, the pack, they are. I've got a copy than, of it too, yeah. Than what it is on uh, on tabletop. And I realized on tabletop they switched them out for larger dice. <laughs> yeah. So the dice that come, and I got the deluxe pack, the dice that come with it, the, uh, the quality is not that great. And a lot of the... Uh, the, the paint inside the uh, the dice numbers are right. already flaking out. So anyway, I got to replace the dice. But yeah, it was a hit. Like it, it, even my my in laws they they borrowed it so they could go play with their friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mark of a good board game. Yeah, um, I've I've got it. I've got it open. I haven't played it yet because I've been playing all these other games with people. That's the one where uh, they're the car. You're rolling the dice and you're trying to. Yeah, get a you, certain number that's on yeah, the card. There's a stack of cards, and you put three cards on the deck, and face up. And each card has a different recipe of what you have to roll to win the point value that's on the card. So sometimes you can, you know, go all in and get the high value card, or you can just nickel and dime. So there's varying ways to play, and yeah, it's it it's very very addictive. Yeah, I yeah, we'll definitely have to play that one. So. Um. And of course, there's also Zombie Dice, which has yep. a million and one expansions on its own, which I have as I well. Did. Yeah, I've got Zombie Dice too. Yeah, I, I started I started that one off. Uh, I was like, hey, let's just play this one. It's really quick, kind of a warm up game. A lot of times we'll play it. Like the last couple of times we've gotten together to play games, uh, Jamie Rudy's wife wanted to play as well. So the only way we were able to do that would be to play at his house. And while they were trying to get Kindle down. We're like, well, I'm like, hey, why don't we just play zombie dice real quick? It's you know pretty quick. It only takes you know maybe ten minutes or whatever, uh, depending on how bad the dice rolling goes, and um, 
and yeah, so my my parents and Rudy are both are all like, wow, this this is actually pretty fun. Um, you're just taking out dice. It's a pressure luck dice game, and you're trying to get as many brains as you can. But once you get three shotgun blast, you're out. So you're always weighing your your do I do I roll again and possibly get more brains to try to get to the to the final victory point, or am I likely going to you know get shot and lose all the brains for that turn? Um, and yeah, that's yeah, that's a lot of fun. It's very addictive, and it's one of those things that I'm thinking. Um, I know there's some different versions of it. Like I know there's like a, a more kid friendly version, like with dinosaurs or whatever. I I really need to Ooh, check into some of these. Yeah, supposedly there's a kid friendly version of it that's instead of instead of zombies, it's like dinosaurs and like you know you're still getting bit. You know, a little less scary. Not that it necessarily is scary for kids, but um, you know, a little more kid friendly. And I'm thinking. My boys would understand this. Like they wouldn't get the, they're not gonna get the full strategy of it. But hey, you want to roll some dice and we'll play a game, and I, they would, I think they'd enjoy that. So. And there's another I'm theme. Trying. It's a, it's the same gameplay. I think it's by the same designer. It's Chupacabra. <laughs> really? No, I haven't heard of that one. Oh, and then, same uh, thing though. Yeah, it's the same same concept. And then uh, there is an expansion for zombie dice, particularly, and it involves a school bus. <laughs> With like a football what? team and cheerleaders, yeah, it's a big, huge, like uh, I think it's like a 16 side yellow dice. <laughs> oh my god, I haven't, I didn't even know yes. about that. I'll have to check that one out. And then, uh, just it's not a new game, but I just discovered it literally this week. And to me, I I see it as a combination of uh, zombie dice and. Uh, I just forgot the name of the virus game that we play. Uh, Pandemic. Pandemic. And okay. so what it is, it's called Luchador. So it's a wrestling ring, and each person has dice that you throw in. And similar to zombie dice, you know, you, you, there's different hits and misses and blocks. But in the deck, there's different luchadors or wrestlers, and each mm-hmm. wrestler has different uh, uh, abilities. And so you select your wrestler, and then depending on what's rolled, it, it, it could tell if you get pinned, if you get knocked out, etc. Totally up my alley, and I'm, I'm totally going to try to get that game. Oh, shit. If you get that game before Guys Weekend, you got to bring it. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Um, speaking of Pandemic, so, yeah, um, Pandemic is... I have not introduced Pandemic to my family yet. Um, we're, we're too busy playing a... a um, uh, straight combat of game right now, um, and I haven't introduced another one to him as well. I, I'm I'm kind of waiting for him to die down a little bit so we can. I'm like, all right, hey, we've been playing these head-to-head games. Let's play some games where we actually get to work together as a team. Wait, hold on. Well, what's, what's the game you're battling though? What, what's that game? Okay, I was gonna save it, but it's called King of Tokyo. Um, ah, okay. King yeah, of Tokyo. Go with that one first, yeah. Okay, so King of Tokyo. Everyone picks a giant monster, and there's you know they're all they're not. They're not the actual. They're not Godzilla. It's Gigazord. It's basically a giant lizard that looks like Godzilla, but it's not Godzilla. You know, for copyright. Anyway, so everyone picks uh, a giant monster, and the point you're you're trying to get to uh, 20 victory points. Um, well, I say that there's two ways to win the game. You can either uh, get to 20. Uh, first person to get to 20 victory points wins, or if you can kill off everyone else. Um, I've played this multiple times with my family, and no one has won the game yet, killing everyone off. Um, it's always you all. Everyone who's won has won by getting the points. That being said, I never play for the points. I always play for the kill because for me, it's so much more fun. Um, so what happens is, is, is uh, when it's your turn, you um, there's you've got I think it's five or six, it's six dice. You roll these dice, and if you get the numbers on the you have to get three of the same numbers on the dice to get the points for it. Uh, then you can get these energies that you can use to um, um, buy special powers, and then you can either you can heal as long as you're not in Tokyo, and then you get these actual attacks. So uh, the one time I came the closest to winning by killing everyone else off, um, I had picked up a special power that basically like was automatically damages everyone else by three. And I rolled the dice as best I could and I think I got five hit points. And I literally like knocked, I killed my dad, I killed my brother, 
And then the next time around, I was able to kill my mom, and I was not quite able to kill off Rudy's wife, Jamie, before she ended up winning the game with points. Um, but, oh, my God, it's so much fun. I'm telling you, for the guys' weekend, y'all are going to love this game. Um, but it is straight combat. Like, you are specifically going after each other. Uh, you know, the first time you play it, you may try to be like, well, I'm not really going to hit, you know, go for the hit points or whatever. And then after you kind of get comfortable with it, you're like, fuck no, I I'm coming after you. It's going to be awesome. So, uh, because when you're in Tokyo, you can't, you can't heal, but whenever you, when you attack, you attack everybody else. Uh, whereas when you're out of Tokyo, unless you have a special power, when you attack, you attack only the person in Tokyo. So, uh, tons and tons of fun. Uh, but like I was saying, on the opposite end of that, you have games like Pandemic, and you're literally playing against the board game. Um, at the last guy's weekend, uh, we uh, the uh, curse of Rudy, as it were, uh, took down uh, our friend uh, Cyrus, and I'm not quite sure what was going on with, with Manon. Uh, Rudy had a baseball game or something, so like, Lou gets up that morning, and so do I, and we're like, you want to play board games? He's like, okay. We brought out Pandemic, and we played how many games, probably? At Six least, or seven? At least. Yeah. We played, we played um, from, it was 8 o'clock till about 2. <laughs> yeah, we played quite a few games. Um, and you're literally, like, you have to plan out every single move with everyone on the team. Um, the, the point of the game is, is you're trying to eradicate uh, four different viruses that are on this world map. And you've each got a different character that has different uh, special abilities. Well, as you're going through the game, um, there's only one way to win the game. You can only win the game by eradicating all four viruses. You can lose the game like five different ways. And uh, at any given... And one of the fun things about this game is you could have everything seemingly wrapped up in a nice bow, and you're just like, we're just going through the motions to knock out this last one. We got this in the bag. No problem. And literally within one or two turns, the shit will hit the fan. Everything will just go upside down, and you're just fucked. And you're just like, how did we lose this all of a sudden? And it happens, though. But it make, Will Wheaton put it, He's had more fun losing this game than winning some other games, and I understand that because yeah, I totally we did agree. not win every game, and we had a blast playing it. Yeah, I think that's, out of all the games so far, I think that's probably my favorite. You've heard I, about I, that I new one. Uh, <laughs> you've heard about uh, Pandemic Le Legacy, haven't you? I've heard of Legacy. There's another one where there's like a, a, a cyber terrorist, or a, a bioterrorist, I mean. Really? Yeah, and, and there, there's another one there. It's kind of confusing. I have to read more into it. It's something like uh, there's uh, as you're playing the main game, there's a side game that someone else plays. You you play like a lab technician trying to solve how to cure faster or something like that. Huh. I have to check into that. And that sounds interesting. I gotta try to get my my mother. I gotta get that game to have my mother-in-law play it because she's a chemist. So like right oh, she would love it. <laughs> See, I think because Rudy, you know, uh, was a science teacher, I think he would love it if you know, like I said, it's just getting everyone back around to it. So, because I mean, there's even a, a simpler um, uh, a cooperative game that I want them to play called Forbidden Island, and we've played that multiple times too, and that was a ton of fun too. Um, See, man, it really got into that. For pandemic, that game would probably be the hardest and the best to play. But because pandemic is so much harder, so much more advanced, it's like we breeze through that one so quickly. <laughs> yeah, um, I've had tons of fun playing that too. Though I can't wait to get like my mom and my dad and my brother on that one. So because uh, especially if if we we. Um, have either played a couple of games of like King of Tokyo and we've been like at each other's throats before then, then it's like, all right, we all have to work as a team now. And there's no <laughs> that could be interesting. That might be a lot of fun. Um one of the now, games that I Oh, go on. No, I was gonna say there is another game that I don't know if you have it. I do have it. And uh my buddy he has a, a that same game but a different theme. And it's um uh Oh, I just forgot the name. It's a card game made by NASA scientists. It's also on, on a, a tabletop. Oh, um, um, Flux. Flux. Flux, yes. That game is very confusing at the beginning, 
But once you get uh-huh. a hang, the hang of it, it's very good. Now, the other part of the of the the appeal to this card game is you have to find since there's a million and one different themed decks, if you find a theme that you really really like, you'll get the game that much faster. So. Uh, some friends of mine, they bought the uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail version of Flux. Oh and my god. They, they totally got hooked into it. And I have just the standard version of Flux. There's also like a, a, a space themed, uh, like Star Trek themed version of Flux that's a little more complicated. But yeah, the, the Monty Python one is hilarious. I bet. The one that they showed on tabletop was uh, Star Flux where they were playing um, uh, uh, spaceship version stuff, and uh, that one looked interesting to me too. Do you have that one? Or w- no, I don't have it. I wish I did though. Okay, I have to because I know that one adds the the stuff about the keepers and the. Um, um, sounds like Cyrus is out. Um, I'll just mute him here real quick. <laughs> wow, we literally bored him to sleep. Um, oh well, it's our episode. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, yeah, I, okay, so I got to play this other board game, and I don't own it yet. I want a copy of it. There's two different versions out there. There's a quote-unquote clean version, and then there's a, um adult version. It's called Exploding Kittens. It's from... Oh, uh, yeah, I heard it is. Yes, it's from the guy who does the oatmeal. Um, everyone's seen those comics online. They're hilarious. Love them to death. And the whole point of the game is, is you're trying to... Uh, when you get an exploding, you're going to get an exploding kitten. When you get an exploding kitten, you're out of the game. So you're trying to get everyone else to get an exploding kitten and and die as quickly as possible so that you end up winning. Um, but some of the cards that they come up with are just hilarious. Like literally, you can someone can do something to you, some horrible card to you, and if you have a card that literally just says nope, it doesn't count. <laughs> and I'm just like. That's fucking awesome. Like, there's, there's no reading. It's, it's literally just the word nope. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've, I played it once or twice over at one of Christie's friends' house, and I was like, oh my god, I've got to get a copy of this. This is awesome because you can get it at Target, which we should talk about. You know where you can get some of these games here in just a little bit too. Um, but yeah, so exploding kittens, and then of course the granddaddy of the, um, of those type of card games is um, uh, Cards Against Humanity, and of course we'd have to mention that one. Um, it is definitely an adult game. You cannot play this one with your kids. Please, but please cards, don't. Yes, Cards Against Humanity. The only thing is, though, I found is actually once you start to kind of uh, learn the the, uh, the 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 cards, it does seem to get a little boring. So I, you kind of have to either get uh, you know the other expansions that go in it. I think there's six. Or I guess. That Something like five or six, sticks. yeah. And um, you definitely have to mix those in there. But it's one of those games you can't play like every weekend because you know the it stops yeah. being as funny. It's like it's like but, it's like a hundred to zero. Like at the beginning, it's like so freaking hilarious. You it's you just cannot stop laughing. And then yeah. like the next weekend, you're like, okay, we already did this. <laughs> it also helps if you get people who you who have not played it and or if you've been drinking a little. This is definitely a game that is better drinking when you're a lot. drunk. Or drinking a lot. Um, if you've never played Cards Against Humanity, basically, uh, whoever's turn it is picks up a card and reads a question, and it may be a very simple, straightforward question. Everyone else um, gives you an answer card. Sometimes, the, sometimes there's two or three answers that go along with it, and then you read off what they are. And then you decide who had the best answer, and whoever had the best answer gets that point. And the first one to, I don't know, 15 points or whatever, 7 points, 10 points, yeah. like that, 10 points maybe, wins. If you're going to play it that way. A lot of people just keep playing it until, like, infinite, <laughs> until, like, yeah. all the cards are going to whatever. Now, um, the, the little piece of strategy, though, is it's not that you answered the question in a in a certain way. It depends on who's asking the question, and you exactly. play you play towards their mentality. <laughs> exactly, because like if there may be people, I'll be honest. If there's something that's even slightly racist, Christy thinks that it's hilarious, and I guarantee you, you play something like that, she's gonna probably pick your cards. Um, if it's really thoughtful, you've got a better chance of getting my vote. Um. 
but like, and uh, some of the answers that I remember right offhand. One of the questions I remember specifically is, um, what smells? So literally, you would put down the card that says what smells, and you could quite honestly, not making this at all, making this up at all, get the answers of the black half of Barack Obama, my boyfriend's stupid penis, and dead babies. And you would have to pick which of those three, you know, or however many people are playing. Because you can also play with large groups, which also makes it yeah. really, really fun. Because um, there's a ton of cards in this game. But yeah, so um, Cards Against Humanity. I heard about another one that's on my list. Actually, let me pull up my Amazon list real quick. Because uh, this sounds like it would be a fun one that I think Christy would enjoy as well. Uh, it's called Red Flag. And... Um, let me pull up my list. List. Where's the board games? That's not the one I wanted. There we go. Um, yeah, it's called it's called Red Flags, and what it is is um, um, you're trying like you're, you're trying to um, you lay down two or three cards that uh, describe uh, uh, someone that you're, you're you're proposing for this person to date. So it's your turn, Lou. And uh, Lou lays down, you know, uh, Cy would lay down two or three cards. Um, like, for example, uh, Olympic g gymnast, loves to cuddle, lives in a castle. Those all sound like awesome things for a date, right? And then someone else like Jay puts down the red flag, punches barista every time they see them, or brings mom to the first date, or is a serial killer. And then you have to try to convince the person to pick the the person you've created. You have to you know pick whoever's turn it is to pick the person you've created, despite the red flag that's attached to them. <laughs> so you're like, listen, they're they've got you know they're huge they've got you know huge boobs that are like freaking awesome in bed. Sure, there's a serial killer. Everyone's got problems. But this is the best part. I think that could be a fun game, especially with uh with the wives. I think they would find that hilarious. So, um, but yeah, Cards Against Humanity, uh, uh, Red Flags. Um, there's another one called uh, Super Fight that's kind of along those lines that I heard about. That that sounds like that would be interesting. Um, a couple other games I just want to mention. There's another game that's really high on on my list that I really want to get called um, uh, Betrayal at Haunted House. Um, the house, I'm sorry, betrayal on the house, uh, betrayal of the house on the hill, and um, what it is is everyone picks a character, and the house changes differently every time. It's got these tiles that you put down, and as you explore the house, you flip over the tiles to explore the different rooms. And as you're exploring the rooms, you're collecting items to build yourself up. You're you know exploring the house or whatever, and um, Occasionally, the, uh, something is triggered called the haunt. Depending on the situation and depending on how the haunt happens, it will trigger the, re the second part of the game. There are literally 50 different haunts in this game. Oh. And the haunts can range, and, and every time it's something different. The haunt that they did on the episode of Tabletop was... Um, depending on who had a certain item in a certain room at a certain time, was possessed and was in control of uh, three demons. And they go off and they have their own playbook that they have to read through as to what their new powers are and what their objective is, and everyone else has to figure out how they're going to defeat them. So as you're playing, you want everyone to build themselves up to you know, hopefully take out the monster, but you never know who the monster is going to end up being until the haunt happens. So it also randomly not only is the house randomly generated, but whoever's going to be the bad guy is randomly generated as well. I know there's one where someone turns into a werewolf, and so everyone else is trying to kill the werewolf in the house or whatever. Um, that sounds like a ton of fun. Yes. Um, there's another game that I also really want. Uh, it's kind of along those lines. It's called um, Last Night on Earth. Um, Two p. It, I think it's f up to six players, maybe. But um, uh, half of the people play the humans trying to get out of the town that's randomly generated every time, uh, doing a specific thing, and the other half are playing the zombies trying to kill them. Um, and then there's uh, another one that's called uh, Dead of Winter that's kind of like that, but like on the next level scale, like it's super duper involved, and. Um, 
as you're playing this game, you <laughs> as you're playing this game, you're trying to uh, you're in a colony in a zombie-infested wasteland, and you're trying to survive. And all this shit keeps happening, and all you have to do is survive. But you have to kill zombies. You have to search for food and, and ammo and stuff like that. And each there's a group uh, goal of surviving. But each person has their own personal goal they have to hit as well. And one of the people in the group could actually be a traitor. And you'd never, you don't know the traitor until they, they basically you know, out themselves or until everyone loses. And um, on the episode that they were playing of, of Tabletop, it was getting really tense. Like uh, 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 Grant Anahara from um, uh, Mythbusters was on. And Will Wheaton the entire time kept trying to convince everybody, he's the fucking traitor, he's the fucking traitor. And they're like, I don't know, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. And at the end of the game, it turns out it was Will Wheaton. Um, but yeah, that would be super fun just because you never know if there is a traitor in your midst. And if there is, you know, how are you going to ferret them out? And, you know, uh, are you going to be able to? So, um yeah, there's just, I mean, there's just tons of stuff. And then that, that doesn't even get into, like, some of the, the more um, RPG-type stuff. Like, um, we've only got to play it a little bit, and I know you've played more of it. Um, uh, oh, jeez, what is it called? Uh, Munchkin. All right, before, before we talk about Munchkin, let me kind of tangent just a second and pose a question to you. Okay. So there's varying degrees of games. There's the introductory games that we talked about, you know, live Mousetrap, those kind of games. Then you have the card games, Uno, uh, things like that. More mainstream, family-friendly. And then you have right. the in-depth games, Pandemic, you know, uh, uh, games like that. What is the highest class of game you're able to get the wife or the girlfriend to to get to? So for you... How high on the on the totem pole were you able to get? Um, Christy has no interest in playing uh, Settlers of Catan. Doesn't interest her at all. Um, she likes playing um, um, uh, Cards Against Humanity because, of course, you know she's like us and dirty minded. Um, she likes playing that. She does. I did introduce her to Ticket to Ride, and she does like playing Ticket to Ride. Um, I don't. I don't know. It's she's not very she's not really into board games anyway i don't i don't know how much more i can really get her into it's it's just kind of one of those things that i think if she sees us playing it and finds well, it interesting i, I, I consider it. ticket to ride upper middle okay so, up, so right. upper middle that's that's definitely going to be the highest like no. i'm definitely not going to get her into anything like probably not even munchkin or anything like that yeah. so well there's a, one of my coworkers he's huge into board games now we're pretty big in the board games he makes us look like amateurs. Okay. I think at last count, he told me he had like something like 200 games. Wow. Like he has those, you know when you go to the mechanic shop and they have those big red uh, 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 cabinet type tool chest type things? He has like two of those full. Like every week he's telling me, I found this game, I've got it on eBay. Found this game, I've got it on eBay. The thing is, his problem is he doesn't have enough people to play games with. Right. And uh, uh, most of his uh, friends, his wives and friends, they'll play, like, you know, uh, middle, the middle level games or lower, you know. They, he, 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 <laughs> the game he oh. wants to play the most is Pandemic. And he's read the, ma the instruction book just over and over and over to the point where it's falling apart. Oh, my God. And seriously? He hasn't, he hasn't been able to play it. And so, uh, you know, I guess the thinking, I'm kind of lucky. I got my my friend who he'll play, you know, Settlers of Catan and Munchkin and all those. But the thing is, we were able to get our wives to play it <laughs> more that's than once. Awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. But I think that's about as high as we can get. So with Munchkin, I consider that. In, what, what what's the word? Top tier, in, uh, but th at the beginning. Yeah. If pandemic's gonna be towards the top, so Munchkin, yeah, fantastic game. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I the the thing about Munchkin, and it, it's almost infuriating in that. Am I getting an echo? Okay. Um, 
uh, it's almost infuriating that it does specifically leave the rules open for you. Like it specifically says, if you don't really know what to do, make it up. And I so, love, I, I've applied that to other games like Flux. Uh -huh. It perfectly makes Flux so much more playable when you take that uh, 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 instruction from uh, man. I just forgot his name. The, the guy that made Bunchkin. I know you're talking about, but I can't think of his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Austin. Anyway. Yeah, that rule applies to all games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when there's any questions about... And I normally don't have a problem Basically, with that. It's just it, that Munchkin can be so in-depth depending on how you're playing it. Yes. And even right now, there's some stuff I still don't understand. But basically, he says, if if there's a rule that's conflicting, you argue amongst, argue amongst yourselves. If you still can't come to a consensus, whoever owns the game you're playing at that particular moment has final say, move on. <laughs> <laughs> And I like that rule. <laughs> That's a damn good rule, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay. So yeah. So like, you've got you've got games like that. Munchkin, by the way, because we didn't really talk about Munchkin, is a game where um, it's it's kind of a somewhat of a, a role playing game in a box. You're you're basically just trying to get to level ten, and you're fighting monsters to do it. But I mean, when you you're fighting monsters, it's very simple math. But the the fun thing about Munchkin is is you can either help or hinder other people. So you can um, throw in to help you know uh, beef up the person's character so they can defeat the monster, or you can beef up the monster so that they don't they can't defeat the uh, you know they can't defeat them and then they uh, have to suffer a punishment or whatever. Um, so that's a ton of fun. And but now you some... think about it, that's also one where you don't really get eliminated. Along yeah, the that's way, true. Similar to Catan and some of the European games, you're not really eliminated. But you just can't win. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're just kind of there to 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 do whatever. So, um, I would honestly going back to your your question about you know kind of the the levels of stuff. Um, there's a I always consider the role playing type games uh, at the up at the upper echelon stuff. Um, I, well, you know, I take that back. Uh, probably what I was talking about before the show the. Um, uh, at, at this place called, uh, uh, um, oh jeez, it's basically a, a card slash you know game shop or whatever, and like they have these huge tables and they're playing these big you know massive like uh, games where you actually have the little characters and stuff that you move around. Those I would say at the are the probably the absolute upper echelon. Um, well, you know we were gonna talk about you know uh, places to get these games. You know who's really stepped up their game lately? It's Target. Mm. Yes, they have. Actually, you Target. can get Exploding Kittens at Target. Uh, Pandemic is at Target. Uh, Catan and ex uh, some expansions are at, at Target. Normally, it's the four to six player expansion. Yeah. But they've really got a lot of uh, more advanced games, not just the introductory games. Yeah, the um, I would say Target has definitely stepped up their game on that. Um, the other place that I tend to like physically go look to see board games is um, uh, Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble usually has a, a pretty good uh, selection of, of of awesome board games there too. So, otherwise, it's pretty much Amazon at least for me for the most part. Um, there, like I said, there are a couple there's, there's of something about going to a dedicated place. Yes, I agree. And the, the best place I've ever seen is one I stumbled upon just this past year. It's in Austin. It's Dragon's Lair Comics and Games. And when you find it's, uh, I believe, on the north side. If I'm not, no, uh, yeah, yeah, towards the north side. And when you look at it on the outside, it's at a strip mall. It looks tiny. But when you go inside, it is gigantic. And I don't know if this is a common thing. I haven't been to many places like this in general. So I don't know if this is a common thing or just something exclusive to them. But the, the awesome thing about it is most places are comic books. Oh, by the way, here's a few games. Yes, this place, I agree. This place is, here's the games, here's the gaming tables. Three-fourths of this place is games and gaming tables. And then, oh, by the way, here's some comics and here's some, you know, general swag. But, uh, when I walked in with my buddy, they must have had at least 15, 20 tables around that ballpark. Majority of them are full. A lot of times they're reserved. People call ahead and reserve tables. Wow. And they are playing every type of game you can think of. 
in, some introductory games, a few there, uh, a lot of mid-level games, and then some of the real in-depth games. Like, I don't even know what game these guys were playing, but they had rulers and <laughs> the entire... It looked like a, 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 some of these uh, uh, tables were like billiards tables uh, size with the felt, and they had the, the whole thing full. Yes. And uh, the other cool thing about this place is they had a rack, and it wasn't just a small it was a pretty big rack, just filled with games. And a big, huge sign says, hey, pick a game, play it. If you like it, you can, you can buy it. There's no fee, you don't have to check in, you, uh, you just walk up, grab a game, if there's a table open, sit down, break it open, start playing. So the first game we played, well, tried to play, was actually a football game because we're both really big into football. And it's literally a legit game of football, but it's a dice rolling card game. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it, it was in depth, and I was like, man, if we had more time, we would totally get into this game. But we, right, and the game was brand new; nobody had ever grabbed it to play it, so we were breaking it open for the first time. And uh, so we put it back, and then after that, we played Flux, and then uh, we played a few games of that. Uh, but then we had to leave. But that place had everything. They had a whole aisle just for Catan and all its expansion packs. I mean, Damn. all of them. All of them. They had another section just for... Um, uh, oh, oh, by the way, uh, on Catan, they also had the, the travel game. <laughs> the the in-car you know, travel game. Uh, they I didn't had, even know they had one. Yes, yes. They, they had everything. All the different, even accessories... That makes the uh, the any version of the game you know more playable. They yeah. had uh, an aisle just for Flux and all its different themes. Uh, they had everything you could think of. They had a special section just for the tabletop games that were covered uh, 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 in recent weeks. They had a list. Tabletop covered it. This one, this one, this one, and this one. It's right here, right Smart. here, right here. It's all right there in one one section. One of the best places I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to check that place out. You said Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair, uh, comics and games. Cool. Yeah, comic book places. You're right. Most comic. That's the uh, previous to this kind of renaissance, like you were talking about. You know, to find some of those. You know, if you didn't want just the standard board games, you know, Monopoly and, and stuff like that. Uh, 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 comic book stores tend to be where you want to go and like you said it was mostly comic books and then there was one section over here that had you know some of these other games or whatever so um yeah um oh I was going to say going back real quick to the um uh, the role playing game stuff um I've never actually played the granddaddy of all granddaddy role playing games uh Dungeons and Dragons I've never played it before have you I dabbled in it way 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 back like late 80s early 90s and that was at the time when everybody thought it was satanic. <laughs> wow. So you remember that time. And oh, so, yes. That was ridiculous. And so I never really got a chance. I, uh, I have like one memory of being some of the neighborhood kids sitting around. We spent like two hours uh, creating a character. You know, you roll the dice to, to find their attributes. And we got to play just, you know, maybe – part of a one little section of a battle and that was about it and I never really got to play a full-fledged game and I even brought, I remember I, I brought it up but the time dedicated to play a game like that is is pretty lengthy and then you have to have someone to be the dun- dungeon master who has to know what the hell they're doing exactly yeah and uh, they have to have a, somewhat of a gift of gab and a way to you know be a good storyteller and there's not many of us to go out that can do that. I sure as heck can't do that. So it would probably be pretty bland if we were to play it right now. <laughs> yeah, that's something I'd, I'd need to find, like, a, you know, maybe someone, a coworker, someone who's, you know, done it or used to it or wouldn't mind DMing it or whatever just so that I could... I, I'd like to give it a shot at least once. Laney's done it, and yeah. I'm like, really? You've done it? Fuck, I haven't done it. It's like a bucket list game. Like exactly, just, yeah. It, it, if we play it and we never play it again, okay, fine. At least we could say we played it. <laughs> exactly. Yes, that's exactly it. I'm not planning on exp- you know creating a character and doing this week after week after week. If you do that, that's great. That's awesome. If that's what you're into, awesome. More power to you. I, I just want to play it at least once. Some of the 
uh, I'd say lower level. Not, I don't want to necessarily say it that way. Easier to get into uh, 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 role playing games. I would like to check into. There's one. It's because it, it's basically just a book that we buy, and um, it's called End of the World. And they're supposed to be coming out with different versions of it. But the one I'm looking at is Zombie Apocalypse. Um, I heard about it from uh, a podcast that I listened to, and um, basically what happens is is everyone shows up you know who's going to be playing the game. You've got one person who's playing the dungeon master, uh, essentially, and the first part of the game, uh, which is actually part of the game itself, is you are playing yourself in this game. So you have to come up with your own statistics. You have a certain amount of points to allocate to different things, and once you come up with your character. You then have to reveal the different aspects that you've chosen for yourself, and everyone else gets to vote on it. And if people are like, <laughs> you know, you gave yourself a five on speed, but let's be serious, Lou, you, you haven't run track in a long time. You know, you're more every more. So you ain't I, that strong. Exactly. <laughs> that and that could be funny as shit, right? <laughs> Number one, it, it sounds like it could like actually hurt some friendships, but uh, <laughs> and you ain't that smart. <laughs> yeah, you ain't that smart, bitch. I don't know why you. I don't know why you put a six on yours, know, fuck. We're gonna too, we'll be too busy cutting each other down to where yeah. nobody can win the game. <laughs> exactly. By the time we started the game, we'd all be these weaklings and be like, "Well, we're all dead." Um, but then you literally start the game, and it's like I guess there are different scenarios, but like it's like, all right, well, game starts right now. And so you would start reading like the zombie apocalypse. So, so like if we were going to play it at the guy's weekend, literally we would sit down, we'd come up with our character, you know, our person. Um, we would, you know, vote on each other's characteristics, and the game would start as if we were at the guy's weekend, and that's when the fucking zombie apocalypse breaks out. <laughs> and it's like, this, how much is this book, <laughs> dude? It's only like twenty eight bucks. Like I'm like, that's we, not bad. We we may have to uh, we may have to do that one. Yes, we may have to invest in that one. So, um, couple other quick things. Uh, I I guess they're kind. I get because we've been counted. We've we've counted card. We counted cards. We included cards uh, and card games in this, uh, in this discussion. Going along with that, um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, oh, um, trading card games. Uh, have you ever gotten into any trading card games? Like I, um, I never got into those because it's one of those things where it's an arms race. You, you yes, buy, you have to buy a deck, and then no, no, no. Somebody else got two other decks that will beat your deck, so you got to buy five more decks. And yep. it's like I can't keep up with it. I don't have that much time. Yeah, I, the only time I ever got into that, I was working at Hastings in Colleen, and um, Pokemon was pretty much at the the height of its of its uh, um, success, and. Um, they had they had uh, gotten together with Nintendo and uh, uh, the Hastings were going to be offering um, uh, gyms on Saturday mornings so that kids could come play Pokemon cards. And um, I was I was the video manager at the time and I was the biggest kid there essentially. So the manager told me you're going to be in charge of this and I'm like I've only got one other person. I got this entire department to run. I don't have time for this shit. But it didn't matter. It was fell on me. So I literally spent before there was like we, we got started late and like I think I did it the last the first couple of weekends I think in December or maybe it was the last part of thanks it was somewhere around that time it was sometime you know between the holidays and uh, I sat back there and I think I had maybe one kid show up or one or two kids show up and that was about it and of course they didn't have anyone else to play with. So, you know, it was pretty much a bust. And I asked, I'm like, you know, hey, look, no one's showing up to this thing. Do I have to keep doing this? And they're like, yeah, we need you to keep doing it. The company says we have to do it at least for this amount of time. I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. So I thought, well, I feel bad for these kids that are showing up for this event because, you know, we are advertising it and everything. I thought, well, let me go ahead and get a couple of packs so I can at least learn how to play. So at least when they show up, they'll at least have someone to play with. Um, so I learned how to play, and uh, you're right, it's, it's an absolute arms race, and I never got that great at it, and you know, I never had any like super powerful cards or anything, but by the time that I had built this up, like within a couple of months' time, I had 50 kids showing up every Saturday morning to not only play with each other, but to play with me as well, because it was it was fun playing against your friends and playing against these other kids, but it was really fun to play against the adults. So we even had more adults showing up as well. And I had 50-some odd people showing up to this every single weekend. Um, and then the manager who I had was an absolute dick. Um, 
decided that, um, um, you know, honestly, I don't even remember what the excuse he gave me was, but he pulled me off the project, and um, it's probably because the video department was getting behind because I only had one other helper at the time. So he pulled me off of it and put someone else back there, and the guy they put back there was kind of an asshole. And needless to say, it didn't take long for it to basically fall apart, and I felt bad because I had these kids showing up on Saturday morning and coming over to find me in the video department going, are you not going to play with this? And I'm like, sorry, I have to work. I felt <laughs> horrible for them because I'd like help build this safe place for them to come play cards with their friends and this other dickhead was ruining it and I couldn't do anything about it. So it's another reason why I have such hatred for that fucking company. <laughs> but um, yeah, Lainey apparently has also done, uh, she's played Magic the Gathering some, which is another game that I'm like, I want to try it at least once. So you know, we, we have our bucket list of, of things that we want to try and uh, and do and stuff. But, yeah, board game-wise, I, like I said, I've got a list. I'm looking at my list right now. I don't see the number. 32. I've got 32 board games <laughs> <laughs> on this list of different games that I've either seen or heard about or, like, some of them, like, okay, the I have the uh, Seafarers expansion for Settlers of Catan. I don't have the 5 and 6 player version of it. So that's like, okay, well, when I do get to play... You know, usually it's a larger group, so I need to get that one. But yeah, there's there's other games I could go in here, you know, a lot about. But uh, since our looking at our time here, we've uh, pretty much run our course, so we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, I know this may not be the most interesting topic, uh, as evident by the fact that Jay fell off a little while ago and hasn't come back. And uh, let me turn up size volume here real quick. I got a feeling Cyrus is probably still asleep. I fell asleep for like. I fell asleep for like two seconds, Dave. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Don't even. I have been turning your volume up and down, and I kept. All I heard was. <sighs> okay. Well, initially, I fell asleep for two seconds. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is pretty much the end of our episode. Is there anything you want to add to the conversation, Cyrus? <laughs> Just that you know, board games are so cool and. Um, I really enjoy all these games that you've been talking about, and uh... exactly. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have anything. Okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and wrap it up with our picks and pans for the week. Does anyone want to go to first? I got a pick. All right. Starbucks. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, like I said, I haven't watched your second video yet, but that first video that you did of uh, Star Fox and the Wii U looks fucking awesome. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's a badass game. Plus, you can play with two players. So. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did mention that. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. That'll have to be when you bring down for the guys' weekend. So. Oh, uh, yeah. My pick for the week is uh, Christy and I are about halfway through this last season that dropped. Uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, is the second season dropped on uh, Netflix. Um, the show is, is uh, was written and created by Tina Fey, and honestly, it is a spiritual successor to 30 Rock. Um, originally, it was air, it was sub slated to go on NBC. Like They had originally set up that it was going to be on there, and... Uh, pilot did the pilot for the episode and had started ordering episodes. Well, for whatever reason, they dropped it, and Netflix picked it up. So you can tell about six episodes in, you can tell it's very much so uh, this is the type of thing you would see on NBC, and then after that, it starts to get a little further out there, and they start to get a little riskier with some of the stuff that they're doing, and it's hilarious. Um like I said, if you liked 30 Rock, which I did, 30 Rock was just was genius, um, you're probably going to like The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, like I said, second season dropped. Uh, the basic idea for the show is she, is, her and three other women were in this, um, uh, were, were being held captive in this cult leader's uh, underground, like, doomsday uh, 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 bunker, and she gets rescued. Um, like she was in this bunker for like ten or or twelve years or something like that. So literally half of her life, she you know has not really got to live. So she comes out and she's like, well, I'm gonna go to fucking New York and actually try to live my life. And just she has a roommate who is uh, 
uh, just flamboyantly gay, and he's he's honestly a, a really good actor, but the, his character is just hilarious. Um, yeah, if you have not watched uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt on Netflix, give it a shot, especially if you were a big fan of 30 Rock like I was. Lou, you got a pick or a pain for the week? My pick is play board games. <laughs> there you go. Only that works. If you're a fan of video games, a lot of the board games are borrowing a lot of the play mechanics. <laughs> really <No>. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, also, unlike video games, or at least modern day video games, they require online activation and authentication. And when they pull the plug, <clears throat> will you? Uh, you're not going to be able to play them games much longer unless they, you know, feel grateful and, and decide to port them to whatever the new system is going to be. Board games, who, which more or less cost less than a full-fledged video game, they'll last way longer, and so play games. Sounds like a good idea. Speaking of playing games, uh, make sure you enter the summer movie game. Um, this is the, By the time this comes out, this is the last week to enter. Uh, the show will drop on Tuesday, that which gives you Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to enter the game if you have not already done so. Um, last week's episode, we, we gave our thoughts on what where we felt the movies will probably rank. Uh, so if you need a little help picking your movies, go back and listen to that episode. But... Uh, even if you're, even if you don't want to give it a lot of thought, just enter the game. It makes it so much more fun over the summer just to, you know, have something to, you know, kind of keep track of. Uh, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It's just, it's just a fun thing to do. Um, also, make sure to check us out on iTunes and Stitcher. Give us a five star review. Um, and then in the review section, don't write a review. No one reads that except for me. Uh, instead, tell us about some of the board game memories you have or some of the board games you like playing or that you've seen. Or If you're not into board games, are there any board games that we talked about tonight that sound interesting that you'd like to try? Leave that in you know, the, uh, the comment section. Uh, the show also is on iTunes. I'm sorry, on YouTube, so you can check us out there. Um, and then, of course, you can find the site at Epically Geeky and uh, on Twitter and Facebook at Epically Geeky as well. As well. Where can we find you on the internet, Cyrus? Uh, VideoGameVirus.com, on YouTube, of course, EpicallyGeeky.com. Uh, I've got all kinds of things going on, including a show tomorrow, or, well, this won't be tomorrow, never mind. I do a show on Sundays uh, called Game Rambling, and it's a live show. Uh, you can come uh, get in the chat room and uh, join the show and contribute, and we'll uh, talk at you. and. Uh, this sort of thing. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're uh, if you're middle aged and you still play uh, play video games, not that there's a problem with that, but uh, this is gonna be right up your alley because it's it's guys like us talking about the state of video games now and our hit you know our memories and our history. It's a good show. It's a well produced show, so I definitely recommend it. Lewis, where can we find you on the internet? Epiclicky.com. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter at Optimus Gene. Um, I literally am done with the boys proton packs. I know I've been talking about this forever. Uh, the pictures are up there. I'm going to start working on a video. Um, I'll go ahead and announce this now. I'm actually working on a, um, a step-through guide on how to make this thing. I've been trying to document it as I've been going along so that... Uh, um, you know, it's one thing to go on and see some, oh, hey, someone did that, that's pretty cool looking. It's totally different, you know, having a guide that may actually get you to, to give it a shot. Um, wow, there's a lot of steps to writing a guide to do something like this, but I'm, I'm working my way through it. So uh, I will. that's, that's probably going to take a little while to get up there, but uh, if you want to see the pictures and the progress, you can go check them out right now. For all the guys and everyone on the site, have a good night. <laughs>